Students and teachers from NISD, they head back to school today. Plus an update on the two officers who were shot trying to apprehend a wanted man last week. All right, and believe it or not, okay, a cold front actually moved through San Antonio, but summer cold is way different than fall cold. We're still going to be at 100 degrees, but that is cooler than yesterday. Coming up, I've got a look at the forecast, including a small chance of rain this afternoon. Live from KZ12, the news at noon starts right now. The largest school district in San Antonio area officially starts classes today. Max Massey with Northside ISD's welcome to 102,000 students and more than 125 campuses, some of which are brand new. Social studies, I always forget because I'm so excited. David Romo is starting the second grade here at the brand new Katie Reed Elementary School. We've seen hundreds of them come in, and it's not just the students ready to start a new school year in a new school. The best thing that I, f I feel uh, opening up a new school is everything is brand new. So, you know, technology, from technology to the desk that we get inside our classroom. Um, so, it's just everything is a fresh start. Star Reynolds is a third grade teacher here at Reed, and she's ready to start off a great year. Meeting all the new students and uh, getting to know the Reed community and building that community and uh, starting an amazing culture that, you know, kids won't ever forget as they grow older. This year has new safety protocols and procedures around the district, new buildings, and new technology. So of course, the teachers are ready to begin. Looking at the curriculum, building those lesson plans, making sure they're engaged, uh, students will be engaged and um, interactive and you know setting those um, expectations the first week you know that structure so that way we can um, be successful learners as for david he was excited about the library but he already has his eye on recess the other thing that i'm looking forward to is the playground it's gonna be huge max massey case 12 news as schools are opening their doors learning unfortunately cell phones are opening up to potential bullying Cyberbullying taking no breaks over the summer, but it certainly can intensify when classes begin. Child psychologist, psychiatrist rather, Abigail Talley with UT Health Science Center San Antonio says there needs to be more awareness among parents and students of important ways to identify it and stop it. And it starts with parents having an important conversation with their children. There's a good line of communication about difficult topics and the conversations are going to be awkward and they're going to be uncomfortable, but difficult topics like bullying and when to come and get help. If you start those conversations early, that can lead to, to kind of nipping the, the problem in the bud. And the stakes are high. Experts say there's no doubt that cyberbullying can lead to childhood depression, anxiety, and even suicide. Outside with live cam, it looks like the same old, same old, except last evening it was a little different, especially in the Hill Country, and maybe again tonight. Ooh, wouldn't that be nice? Here's the thing. Yesterday, yesterday it looked like rain in San Antonio. It felt like rain in San Antonio. It even smelled like rain in San Antonio, but the rain fizzled out before it made it to San Antonio. But p parts of the Hill Country did get some rain, and that's because a cool front actually moved through, or as we like to call it here, a not-so-hot front actually moved through. Take a look at forecast high temperatures across the state of Texas. Actually, a lot more palatable across central Texas and north Texas. Highs only in the low 90s. Well, well shy of the record numbers you see here in the yellow. Uh, that is a different story, all because of that very weak cool front. But we're still going to make it to 100 today in San Antonio. Outside right now, beautiful blue skies. It's already 96. Now, as we head into the afternoon, we're going to have a small change for isolated showers and storms, especially south of San Antonio, closer to where that front is right now. Winds continue to be from the north. I'll walk you through the future cast coming up in just a bit. David Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. New at noon, we now have an update on the two San Antonio police officers shot during a manhunt last week. SAPD saying both officers have been released from the hospital and are recovering at home. They were injured last Thursday evening while trying to apprehend 28-year-old Jesse Garcia. He was wanted on outstanding warrants. Garcia was spotted at a home just south of downtown, and according to police, he got into a vehicle driven by another person. Police pursued when they got to Oriental Drive. The suspect shot at the officers, hitting one. The other was hit by debris. Police say Garcia then carjacked a vehicle, took off again until he got to an apartment complex. 
on Westward near Highway 90 and 410. That's where he allegedly shot another officer, then barricaded himself in an apartment for several hours. Garcia was finally taken into custody and is facing multiple charges. A Bear County Sheriff's deputy making some changes when it comes to the people joining the force. BCSO now offering straight to the streets class. It's an accelerated program where those who are not licensed peace, peace officers can join the sheriff's office and they can go straight to patrol rather than starting in the detention or requiring a peace officer's uh, license to transfer to patrol. They can you know, go the traditional route, get their peace officer license, work in the jail if they want to for a couple, up to a couple of years, uh, or they can, they can come in directly to the law enforcement side of the house if they're good enough to pass the test. This program, very competitive. The class comprised of both deputies from the BCSO Detention Bureau and applicants that come from the community. It has happened again, an Osprey helicopter with Americans on board crashing and killing service members. ABC's Ike Adachi reports this latest incident takes the total number of dead to 16 in five crashes since 2021. An urgent investigation is underway into what caused a United States Marine Corps aircraft with 23 Marines on board to crash on a North Australian island Sunday morning, killing at least three Marines and critically injuring at least five others during a training exercise. Our focus as a government and as the Department of Defense is very much on incident response and on uh, making sure that every support and assistance is given at this difficult time. President Biden responding in a statement, writing, Jill and I send our deepest condolences to the families of the Marines who lost their lives in this deadly crash. We are praying for those who also suffered injuries. It was a multinational training exercise, but only American Marines were involved in the crash. Australian emergency services assisting with the recovery efforts. Paramedics seen loading injured U.S. Marines into the back of ambulances, evacuating the injured from the island to a hospital on the mainland city of Darwin, about 50 miles away. A number of investigations will be triggered with um, an accident of this kind. I mean, the Osprey is a very unique aircraft. The Osprey is a hybrid aircraft that takes off and lands like a helicopter, but during flight can rotate its propellers forward and cruise much faster like an airplane. But the aircraft has a patchy track record. 16 people have died in five other crashes involving the military aircraft since 2012, including two in this fiery crash in Hawaii in 2015. Now, according to that report, there have been 16 similar clutch problems with the Marine Ospreys in flight since 2012, but no problems have been found since this February when the Marine Corps began replacing a piece of equipment on the aircraft. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Still ahead, we're going to show you how it was a delicious weekend in San Antonio for those who wanted to help support those suffering from the wildfires in Maui. The Cowboys making kind of a weird move just before ending the preseason. And a state of emergency putting counties on edge as tropical storm Idalia approaches the Florida coast. Who's in the danger zone next? Tropical storm Adelia heading towards the Florida coast It's going to hit other states as well. They are going to feel the effects of it. The tropical storm expected to become a category three hurricane before it makes landfall. Nearly all of Florida's west coast under a hurricane watch as this storm strengthens in the Gulf of Mexico. Now over the weekend, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis declaring a state of emergency in more than 30 counties and voluntary evacuations are also issued. You are in the path of this storm, uh, expect, expect to lose power for, for a certain amount of time. And uh, so just take, take whatever precautions are necessary as a result of that. Forecasters say Adalia is going to be traveling over very warm water in the Atlantic Basin. So it's expected to gather immense energy as it develops there. We would just 
like to have some sort of storm come up here. We don't need all the wind, but we sure do need the rain. It's dry. As we a absolutely bone. do. And you remember last week they had that tropical storm that moved through South Texas. Mm -hmm. A little too far south to provide us with very, very good rain here in San Antonio. But we saw something. The aquifer, though, is still struggling. Down a tenth of a foot over the last 24 hours, well below the average. Stage 2 water restrictions still in effect for SAW's customers. In the pollen count today, molds are still high from that little bit of rain last week, past 1,000. Pigweed is low. All right, after school, picking up the kids. 100 degrees today. Toasty. Just a few isolated storms. I'll have those details for you. And the latest on Tropical Storm Adelia actually seeing hurricane warnings now for parts of Florida. Details ahead. Hawaiian Electric denying it removed evidence during the investigation into the deadly wildfires on Maui. This coming after the Washington Post reported that the utility may have tampered with the scene in Lahaina. The utility says it is fully cooperating with the federal and state local investigators as well. The wildfires to blame for 115 deaths, but nearly 400 people are still listed as missing. Back here at home, a restaurant in Universal City is hoping to help fellow Americans who are still suffering in Maui. Big Aloha's hosting a Mala Mala Maui Benefit Luau. It's a big party coming up this weekend. The event selling out days before featured hundreds of people eating Hawaiian food, listening to Hawaiian musicians, and watching dancers from the fundraiser. We feel helpless, so we're trying to do the best we possibly can. It's me. That's who I am. That's what I am. Big Aloha said it's still accepting donation and it's storefront on Pat Booker Road. Meantime, we are watching what's going on on the Gulf Coast. We uh, are, and we'll talk a little bit more about Tropical Storm Idalia a little bit later. But I want to bring it, bring it home to San Antonio because Ursula, David, this month is likely going to be the hottest month on San Antonio's record ever. Records began in 1880, guys, so this is no small feat, okay? August 2023, so far our average temperature, which is the average of the daily highs and the daily lows, works out to a little bit more than 91 degrees. Now, the previous record has been held by August 2011. Many of us remember the summer of August 2011 uh, when we had an average temperature for the month of 90 degrees. Just last July is uh, going to be our third hottest month on record, so this month, most definitely is going to be taking the cake there. We've only got a couple of days left, and I don't anticipate temperatures being much cooler uh, than the triple digits for us. Other than tomorrow, we may barely uh, be able to see temperatures avoid that triple digit mark. But Wednesday, Thursday, we'll be at 100 or greater. Uh, much warmer than average. But when I look at this forecast, honestly, this is not as bad as last week. You remember last week when we were like 103, 104, 105? This is a little bit cooler, all because a very weak front moved through yesterday, and it's currently to the south of San Antonio. I'm watching these clouds very carefully. Do you see that little cumulus cloud there? You see how it's starting to uh, tower? As we head into the peak heat of the day, there will be some isolated thunder showers out there in San Antonio right now. It's 96 degrees, 99 already in New Braunfels, Seguin, 95 degrees. Bernie, you're at 90. Take a look at these winds, though, from the northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. That's because that front moved through. Our winds are from the north. That's bringing in drier air from the north. And as we head into the afternoon, right along that front there that's washed out south of San Antonio, that's where we could see a little bit more of uh, those showers. But again, they're going to be few and far between and better rain chances south and west of San Antonio, but the possibility is still there for one or two of those closer to the Alamo City. So as far as coverage goes, about 20 to 30 percent this afternoon. Here's the kicker, though. Once we lose the daytime heating, once the sun sets, all rain chances go with it and it'll be a quiet evening. So as you look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast throughout the remainder of the day, we'll be making it to 100 here within the next couple of hours. And then with the winds from the north and some areas 
areas of rain, our temperatures are going to fall into the low 90s by 8 p.m. It's going to be in the mid 80s by midnight. Honestly, not feeling all that bad tonight. If you want to enjoy some time out on the porch, we'll have a wind from the north. Temperatures will be uh, lower in the low 90s and upper 80s, and uh, humidity will be low as well. But it's still going to be hot this afternoon. 100 in San Antonio, 100 in New Braunfels, 99 in Hondo, 100 in Bandera, 96 in Kerrville. All right, let's talk about Tropical Storm Idalia. Okay, Tropical Storm Idalia is about to enter into the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. We're talking temperatures in the upper 80s and low 90s, bathtub warm water. That will act as fuel to strengthen Idalia into a hurricane by early tomorrow morning. Then Idalia will strengthen even further before making landfall along Florida's west coast likely early on Wednesday morning, but effects from Adalia will be felt as early as tomorrow afternoon, and then Adalia will fall apart as a tropical storm across the Carolinas. For your interests in Florida, hurricane warnings from Horseshoe Beach to Spring Hill to Tampa and St. Petersburg, hurricane watch for Gainesville, Florida. And a lot of people travel to Florida or have friends and family in the Florida area. We'll keep an eye on Adalia for you. Uh, just know that it's not gonna directly affect our weather. We'll be looking at highs near 100 every Every single day coming up, a check on ERCOT and how the grid may fare this afternoon. Ursula, David. Thanks, Sarah. The Cowboys wrap up the preseason with a nice game, but then it looks like they're getting rid of the quarterback who got that nice game. And the Texans naming their starting QB coming up. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The NFL preseason is over. Thank goodness it ended with the Texans and the Saints last evening. Texas talking to the, taking on the rivals in New Orleans. Not quite a Mardi Gras party, but, you know, close. First quarter, Texas rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud fires the tight end. Dalton Schultz, 13 yards. Next play, Damian Pierce, another 13 yards up the gut. Oh, take him with you. Two plays later, Stroud gets his first touchdown of the preseason. Three yards to Nico Collins, seven up in Texas. That would do it for C.J. in the game. Second quarter, James Winston hits Jimmy Graham. He muscles his way for the four-yard touchdown. we tied at seven. It was 10-7 Texas at halftime. Third quarter, game tied at 10. Mike Boone spinning his way into the end zone. That's some nice moves. Houston up 17-13. Saints looking to score, but the pass from Jake Hayner gets picked off of the end zone by Grillin Arnold. That'll wrap it up. Here is your final the Saints and Texans, Texans get it by 4, 17, 13. Houston finishes the preseason 2-1. and one. During the postgame reaction, Coach Ryan's named his starting quarterback for week one. Yes, yes, CJ will be our week one starter in Baltimore. It's been over the course of the entire process of OTAs, training camp, preseason games, just seeing the complete product and knowing you know, CJ's desire to continue to get better. We know we're not where we need to be as a team overall. We all have to continue to get better. And it's just having the mindset to do that. And CJ, just along with all our other guys, know that we have to get better in that regard. Saturday, kind of a strange day for the Cowboys quarterback, Will Greer. He got to start the preseason game against Vegas. He was putting on a show, unfortunately for other teams. Dak Prescott was calling the plays from the sideline. Greer threw for 305 yards, had a hand in four touchdowns to guide Dallas for that 31-16 preseason win over the Raiders. So here is where it kind of stinks. On Friday, the Cowboys sent a fourth-round pick to the 49ers in exchange for number three overall pick, Trey Lance, out of North Dakota State. Lance will be the third stringer for now behind Dak and Cooper Rush. That means Greer is auditioning for 31 other NFL teams on Saturday. Though a successful night, emotions did run pretty high in the Dallas locker room after the game. It's been tough, but I've been through tougher stuff. Um, got a lot of respect for this organization and the Jones family. I understand that it's a business at the end of the day, and, and I respect that. And uh, the hardest part on me is just um, leaving this place, to be honest. Just... Um, Got really close with the team, and um, that's the toughest part about what we do. Um, but, man, I've been through the harder things, and I'll rebound and be just fine. Somebody's going to love him the way he plays. So tomorrow we're going to learn his fate officially once the 53-man rosters are finalized. On the other side of the football, Sincere McCormick 
bulldozed his way through the Dallas defense for a nice 10-yard run. The UTSA alum had a productive showing for the Raiders. McCormick racked up 27 yards on the ground when it was all said and done. So we have a couple guys from UTSA showing off out there in the NFL, and we like that. We do. But you got to feel for Will Greer. So go ahead and have a great game, and uh, we'll see if we can find you another team because it's not mm. going to be here. I hate it when we start cutting. That's the business. I know. Still ahead in our next half hour what the gunman of the deadly Florida dollar store shooting had on him that is causing the FBI to now classify this as a hate crime. Plus, what the water level is at Canyon Lake right now and why it's causing concerns for saw. These record-breaking temperatures have also led to record-breaking water levels at Canyon Lake. And in just the last month, Canyon Lake dropping two feet down to just over 892 feet total. That beats the old record yesterday by an inch, and it doesn't look like it's going to get any better anytime soon. Saw says they are keeping a close watch on Canyon Lake, a water source so many people depend on every day in this record-breaking summer. So, for example, uh, Canyon Lake, we, we get water from Canyon Lake. That has been uh, reduced as well because of dry, drier conditions. Um, and so that one, we see some, some impacts. We have a Trinity Aquifer, which, has, which uh, reduces as well in, in drought. Some of the other ones are a little more drought tolerant. They don't, they don't, um, are, they're not affected by year-to-year -year drought. Before today, the lowest lake level ever recorded back in September 2009. They are down to about four ramps that are open out of like almost 20. Yeah. The water level is low. The water company out there is straining to keep us. We're already down to stage three. We've already had water management emergencies twice in yeah, some neighborhoods. Yeah, out in the Canyon Lake area, yeah, right? Is, so yeah, it's getting, it's getting tough. It is. Check with your local water provider what stage water restrictions you're in. For SAWS customers, it's still stage two. But one thing we're going to be watching closely as we have the last couple of days is, is the power grid. Take a look at the ERCOT supply and demand. This afternoon, once again, uh, closer to the evening hours between about 6 to about 8 o'clock, that's when we're going to have to watch fairly carefully that supply and demand. The, the purple line is the supply, the demand is the blue line. They're going to come close again this afternoon, although wind production should be a little bit better. So that's some good news. Regardless, though, CPS Energy has issued a yellow day for the day today. It's best to conserve energy between 3 to 9 p.m. just to lower the uh, impact on our grid however much you can. But tomorrow's a green day. So that's some good news there. All right, take a look at clouds and temperatures. We're starting to see some of these puffy cumulus clouds develop across the hill country. We'll be watching those carefully to see if they can get tall enough to produce any rain. There's a small chance for rain this afternoon. Otherwise, it's hot, 96 degrees outside right now. We'll get up to 100 in the next couple of hours. And then with some isolated rain out there, temperatures will actually fall a little in the later afternoon. 92 at 887 at 10 coming up in the forecast. We're going to take a closer look at all of our area lake levels. I'll have those details for you in just a few minutes. David Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. Former President Donald Trump's election interference trial now set to begin on March 4th, 2024. That's the day before the Super Tuesday primary. After hearing arguments from both sides, Federal District Judge Tanya Chutkin rejected the January trial date suggested by prosecutors, but she also refused to delay the trial for two years, which was requested by the Trump defense team. Federal prosecutors said Monday they have turned over almost all of the discovery material in the special counsel's election subversion case against former President Trump. Sarah was talking about this earlier in the show. Folks in Florida preparing for severe weather in anticipation of Tropical Storm Medallia. It's forecast to strengthen to a Category 3 hurricane, make landfall in the Sunshine State later this week. According to the National Weather Service, a hurricane warning is in effect for nearly the entire west coast of the state. Over the weekend, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis declared a state of emergency in more than 30 counties, and voluntary evacuations are issued for parts of the state. There's some new video being released showing the start of the mass shooting at a Dollar General store in Florida over the weekend. 21-year-old Ryan Palmeter can be seen walking up to a car outside of that store, eventually shooting what may be his first victim, then going into the store and shooting more. The FBI now classifying this as a hate crime since all of the victims were black as well as other evidence. 
Investigators say that the gunman had writings on him that were racist, along with a swastika sticker painted on one of his weapons. The victims named as 52-year-old Angela Carr, 29-year-old Gerald Deshawn, and 19-year-old A.J. Laguerre. Paul Mader was shot, actually shot himself after the crime. Today marks 60 years since Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his iconic I Have a Dream speech. Thousands back again at the nation's capital this weekend to remember a defining moment that inspired change. Marchers citing voter suppression, reproductive rights, and the end of affirmative action. Meantime, back here at home, the San Antonio Food Bank helps more than 100,000 families each and every week across our community. And the need doesn't appear to be fading anytime soon. And that is why on Leading SA this past weekend, Eric Cooper, president and CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank, joined Max Massey talking about the Hunger Action Month and the ways that you can help out. Yes, Eric Cooper joined us and we talked about a lot. We talked about how inflation, energy prices, and of course, gas prices, they're only rising. And with that rise, well, comes the need in our community. It is getting bigger and bigger by the day. Now, over the summer, Eric joined us. We talked about the need while kids were out of school, but there's been a shift back to school, how you can step up, help out families, and of course, the food bank, they partnered with KSAT community during the KSAT Pigskin Classic. Let's see how it went. They're trending like the football. Incredible. I mean, families really want to support the San Antonio food bank, and they know all summer long we've been feeding kids. It's the busiest time of year, and we were able to do 21 million meals to kids this summer. Incredible. Again, wouldn't happen without a lot of people donating, corporations, churches, clubs, schools, everyone doing their part, but to have some fun over the weekend with the Pigskin Classic 2 to raise some food and funds. You know, it's what back to school is all about, but we are going to be busy as we get back to school. You can check out the full conversation with Eric Cooper right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Of course, we have Leading SA every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. Still ahead, a San Antonio rapper's murder hitting a courtroom this week after a two year wait where you can watch it next. And the Pigskin Classic, a day and two nights to remember. We're going to relive some of the excitement coming up in sports. Plus, what one book author is doing to help parents gear up for the new school year. It's coming up after the break.